Thanks for joining Ron and Marty. We appreciate the opportunity to share our life stories with you, some of which will be funny, some of which will give you a little bit of insight into us. But I think the greatest benefit of this weekly podcast is going to be some life stories that we have experienced and we've learned from them. Perhaps you too can learn from them to pass forward to some others within your circle of influence. Our heart desire is to learn from what we have done in the past, some of which would be great to pass forward. Some are going to be the type that been there, done that, not going to do that again. So come on, let's join together, let's share, and let's just have a good time together sharing, learning, and advancing others. Marty, let's talk about, I'm going to use the term despondency, but it's in the context of, I feel like I'm uh, almost down and out, Uh, maybe because of a physical ailment, but it could be something emotional, but I'm just at a low point, and I need to take action, or at least you observing me know I need to make a decision, I need to take action, but until you take action, the expression Nothing's going to change by continuing to do the same thing and expect different results. But Marty, can you help those of us who need to make a decision? We need to do something different to get different results. Ron, I'm going to read John, a passage from John that he records how Jesus healed the paralyzed man. And this paralyzed man was in Jerusalem with Jesus at the pool of Bethsaida. Jesus sees the paralyzed man, and when he saw him there, he knew that he had been there a long time. This man had been there for 38 years. And so Jesus says to him, do you want to be healed? And the sick man answered, sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I'm going, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, get up, take up your bed, and walk. And at once the man was healed, and he took up his bed and walked. There are three things that I I feel like Jesus is asking all of us. We all go through situations. He's asking us to do three things. Get up, take up your bed, and walk. So what is the mat that you're laying on that you feel like you can't get up, You have no energy to get up. You don't even want to get up, but yet you know you need to. So as you said, what action are you going to take? If you have a friend that's in this type of situation, how are you going to help that friend? You're to be there for them, give them resources. But as we just did a podcast, enabling them is not the best thing for them. They need to know if they have a heart's desire to heal whatever situation they're in. They need to get up, take their mat, and walk. Move forward. Marty, what I'm taking from this, there is an aspect of empathy. We addressed that. It is an aspect of being able to identify with what a person is going through. There is an aspect of, I think, being a problem solver. That is, I can identify what you're going through but here's the action you need to take. So that's the, from my perspective, the problem solution aspect of this. But then it's a matter of inspiring. That's one thing. Motivating could be another term used. Inspiring, motivating, encouraging this person to take action. You cannot continue in what you're doing and expect anything to be different. Is that a fair assessment, Marty? It is. But that person has to be at a point where there's no return. They have hit rock bottom and they have to decide for themselves that they've got to change or their life is not going to be much. But what about the person who says, man, I just, I don't even know where to turn. Or suggestions are the action you're proposing. We use the term that takes so far outside my comfort zone. I don't want to take that bold a step. That is so different to me. I don't even know what to do. I just, I feel so uncomfortable, but how do you help a person like that? 
I think you know resources, or you could research resources for this person. Now, I, I feel like they're out there, but the person has to want to. How many quotes do you hear, do the tough thing, even though it's tough, get out there and do it? We've had podcasts with people that have said, I didn't feel like getting out there and doing anything for someone else. I didn't feel like getting out there and, and trying to help myself. But I did. It hurt. It was uncomfortable, but I did it. And there's such a peace when you do something like that. You you do make that step. And, and you go out, you do it, you get help, and... That just helps you feel better about yourself. I think another aspect of this, Marty, is as you surround yourself with those, let's call it a support group, who have the same values, that is, we're all rooted in Scripture, God is not going to tell us to do something or suggest something that's contrary to His Word. That's not going to happen at all. Anything that we hear from someone that would cause us to violate God's word to do something illegal, unethical, immoral, that is clearly violating God's word. But let's just say someone suggests something that, yes, may be difficult, that is, we're having to act on faith, but if that person has our best interest at heart, if that person also wants to surrender himself, herself to God, and wants to be totally obedient to God, the Holy Spirit is not going to tell one person something totally different from another person, but rather, as we are aligned in our dedications and surrendered attitude to our Lord, the Holy Spirit is going to speak something very similar to us and help this person go in a direction. The person who may say, that just seems too difficult, too hard to do, There is an act of faith that, yes, if we move out on faith, God will equip us to do what is right in his sight. Is that a fair statement, Marty? Right. I know you and I have had times where I just don't want to do it. I'm not interested in in doing it, Uh, whatever. But because we have followed the leading of the Lord, we're glad we did whatever he asked us to do. We are involved in situations right now that we're involved in God-sized projects. I can tell you there was a period of our life earlier where we went through five years of not being able to get a home loan, construction loan, because of the downturn in the market. It had nothing to do with our personal finances. It had everything to do with the economy. And quite honestly, we were just a little bit uncertain whether the dream of where we're living right now, what happened, but we prayed, don't even get us started, Lord, to close on the property for purchase if you can't see it all the way through. So yes, there are times that you're wondering, can this all work out? Can this be just too tough to work through? Man, I tell you what, I'm not totally down and out, but I'm at least down. Hopefully, those listening to this podcast, you and me, Marty, we're never out. We're maybe down, but it's only momentary. Sometimes I feel as if we spend more time getting up than we spend staying up. But as we experience life, as we experience various challenges, take up your mat, stand up, move out. I use the expression, stand up, move out, take action. We use the expression frequently, it's much easier to move, change the direction of something, someone in motion, than to try to light a fire under their rear end. As we're in motion, if the Lord needs to redirect us, if our attitude is, Lord, I'm here at your mercy, I am here to be totally obedient to you, redirect me if what I'm doing is not conforming to your will or you have a better choice for me. Marty, has anything like that ever happened in your life? (laughs) Right. We have gone out and it wasn't exactly what the Lord wanted us to do, but he redirected us to his will. The peace that you have when you surrender all to the Lord and do what maybe is uncomfortable, but he will guide your steps because that's what he says in the Bible. He guides our steps. He holds us with his righteous right hand. 
Marty, one thought that comes to mind right now. When we first started our podcast nearly two years ago, you felt that was the direction of the Holy Spirit, but is it a fair statement? You felt uncomfortable speaking? I still do. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> You're feeling easier. I mean, I know you are. Mm-hmm. And the Lord is going to take you through this comfort zone. I mean, you're feeling somewhat uncomfortable with speaking, but I feel very certain there's a time you're going to be out in front of people, and right now that probably makes you cringe to even think about that. I don't want to think about that. <laughs> And I have to. But Lord, thank you for working through Marty. Thank you for working through me. Thank you for the opportunity you presented through the Holy Spirit to have these podcasts. We want to be an encouragement to others. And the source of our encouragement is the Lord's Word. As we live, as we express and make the application of God's Word, we're all going to benefit from that. Marty, I love you. This is being recorded on Valentine's Day of 2023. Thank you for being my Valentine for the rest of my life. Well, thank you for being mine. Let's work together, Marty, and help others through what could be a very difficult time of their life. And even if it's a matter of getting out of a comfort zone to do something that feels very awkward and strange, you can do it. Let's work together. You can learn more about Ron and Marty by contacting them at ron at thecooperculture.com or Marty, M-A-R-T-Y, at thecooperculture.com or look them up on their website, thecooperculture.com. And the other way is to search for them on eSpeakers, plural, dot com and search for Ron as a keynote speaker.